Greetings, hellos and how are's. I'm here with another video, hopefully it's going to be a series of videos on how to use voice attack, how to do key presses, etc, and other wonderful things that it can do. For those who don't know, voice attack is a little program that lets you turn your voice, amongst other things, into actions. Predominantly key presses, but it can also do other things as well. But we can get to that in later episodes. It's just a case of you give a command and it presses a key. That's the basics of it. It's very simple, but you can build upon it and make it very complicated and do some really funky cool things. And with some plugins, you can do even more. But again, we'll get into plugins at a later date. So to begin with, you need to install VoiceTag, which I've already done. Just run the installer, follow the prompts, and away you go. When you load it up, you'll have a single profile called My New Profile. And it'll have nothing in it, if I remember correctly. I've been playing with mine, so I've emptied it out for now. Now, we'll go over the main window on Voice Attack. So this is your profile list. And if I click on mine, I've got a few profiles. There's a mix in there's mostly mine ones and some other ones that I've, you know, I've paid for. If you want to edit a profile, you click on this bit here. And it brings up the Edit a Profile window. And in there, you could do all sorts of things. Add a new command, edit a command, delete a command. You can import commands. You can change how they're viewed, how the list works. And you can also filter it through here as well, through various bits and pieces, various options. But we won't see anything here. There's no commands. Each profile has its own set of options as well. These can do quite clever things, and we'll get to those as we get on with making a profile. You've also got an option here, more profile actions. So you can create a new profile, export a profile, import one, duplicate one, or delete one. Stop commands. So if you've got a command which is running in a loop or you told it to run X number of times, you want to cancel it, click that and it will stop any running commands. Not listening. At the moment, I've turned off the microphone. If I turn it back on again and I start talking, it may show things up on the screen. They go like that. I need to do the voice training again, I think, but on mine, but you get the idea. And it can be quite funny sometimes with the things it picks up that it thinks you've said. It's kind of close, but it's not 100% perfect. But it's trying to guess at what I'm saying. Because there's no commands in the profile, anything I say is being interpreted as a command. And depending how quickly you say things, it can be rather, well, almost precise. So this is what be on by default. If you right click in this window here, in the middle log window, you get this little pop up. So you can select everything. You can highlight text, hold down the shift key, and then click and begin in the end. You can do control if you want to pick up on certain things. And if you right click again, you've got the option to copy it. You can also clear the window, change whether the log entries appear at the bottom or the top, show near the latest entry. And this is the one I always turn on. Do not show unrecognized items. And they all disappear. They go. If you're given a voice command and it's not being recognized, enabling the show unrecognized commands might give you an idea of where it's going wrong. Then the other ones, you've got how many lines are displayed. The default, I think, is 1,000. I've set one to 10,000. And then you've got you consolidated duplicate entries. So if you'll just shorten up the log a little bit. Back over to here, you've got listening, which turns off the listening. Well, I've got mine on a toggle key. This toggles the keyboard shortcuts, which allows you to press a key to activate a command rather than a spoken phrase. That toggles the mouse shortcuts on and off. And then this is any um, other device like joysticks or controllers you might be using. And that one over there knows the options. Here, you can use this if you click and hold to drag and resize the window. That's the smallest it'll go. Obviously, you can only get full size if you want. I always have mine minimized. Then you've got the standard minimize, expand, and then close. Let me do that one full screen. 
back down again. And that's the front end of voice attack. But before you do anything, there's a few things you need to know about voice attack. One is the voice training. That's the biggest thing. If you don't do voice training, it won't work very well. Because Windows needs to understand you and how you speak. And if you don't do the voice training and set up your microphone, you'll have a problem. And voice attack can get confused and you get, get frustrated. So it's definitely worth doing the voice training and set up your microphone and get it going properly. So the easiest way to do it is if we go down to the spanner icon down there, click it, pop up with a menu. Now you want to go to the recognition tab here, if you're not on it already. And on here you've got an option here for utilities. You've got a few options here. So you've got speech control, speech engine training, add and remove dictionary words, microphone setup, and then sound settings. The first one you want to do is this one, microphone setup. Now I've already done it for myself, so I'm not going to go through and do it again. But it's very simple. So you just pick up whichever type of microphone you got. You know, is it a headset mic? Is it one of the desktop mics? Is it another mic like a, you know, when you put on a boom, which is what I'm using. So you select other and then you follow the props through. And then as you go through, it'll ask you to read a, a bit of text on the screen and it'll adjust your volume level. When you do this, make sure that you can put your microphone in the, the same position again and again and again, because it will make a difference. So we'll get rid of that one for a sec, because I say, what you done mind? Once you've done that, it'll adjust your volume level on Windows. So if you're using the mic for other things, you might need to check those volume levels. But it'll try and make it, you know, set it to the, the best setting it needs to be. Back into utilities again, and then we've got this one here, speech engine training. Now this is one which people go, oh, on. There's two parts to it, part one and part two. So as you go through it, It'll ask you to read these bits out here in these, each box. You can pause it and you can carry on if you want to. Go through and do each part at least three times. After you've done this section, it will then basically let you go to part two, and then we we'll do it again, do it again, do it again. But I say do it at least three times, a minimum of at least three times. The other thing you've got in utilities is this, which is add remove dictionary words, which is quite useful. If you find that there's a phrase or a word that Windows speech isn't really picking up very well, you can add it in here. So you can add a new word. Put this in for two secs. If I can spell, there we go. And then you've got the option here. Record a pronunciation, which I would always recommend doing. And you can add capitalization, is it capitalized, etc. And then you can add words in, words or phrases. It's very, very good. You can prevent a word from being dictated, but that's more to do with Windows speech recognition and voice attack. And then you can also change existing words that you've recorded in the system. Quite powerful, that is. The other things in here, um, that's your speech changing. That's the Windows one by default. Unless you need to, don't touch it. The recognized speech delay is the amount of time that voice hack waits to perform actions after it understands a phrase or text of silence. So you might need to play around with that number depending on how quickly you're talking or how quickly you're trying to trigger a command after saying something. With these settings here, these ones, there's no hard and fast rule. Just what works for you. So you might have to tweak things, adjust things, move things up and down. With the speech delay, if your phrases are similar and lengthy, a higher value might be needed. But if your phrases are short and are different, go with a lower value. But you'll just have to tweak things until you find what works for you. Like with mine, it's at zero at the moment. Yeah, I recognize speech delay. That's the amount of time that a voice act waits before rejecting what you've just said. An example of why you want to increase it would be in a situation where you have a two word command like pet attack or fire rockets, those sorts of things. Again, it's one of those things you might need to tweak. I've never had to touch it. The command weight, so as it says in the manual, this values the relative weight of the command in your profile versus anything else you say. The higher the number, the more likely the voice hack will make a best guess. For example, when it's set up a maximum of 100, your commands have full weight, which means anything you say will be interpreted as a command. So if you have a command called landing gear and say 
oh dear it might confuse oh dear with landing gear because they sound similar to the speech engine you'll just have to try different settings to see what works better for you for me it works better at zero minimum confidence when the speech engine recognizes a phrase it provides a confidence rating on just how accurately it thinks it's heard what you've said the higher the number the more selective voice attack will be when executing commands and you can also again get it to by ticking that box there to show the commerce level on the voice act log window. With the minimum unrecognized commerce level, it will help you filter out the unrecognized log items when you're talking. Disable adaptive recognition. Voice act is constantly learning from what it hears on your microphone. So when environments are noisy, the speech changing may become somewhat unresponsive, but selecting this option isn't recommended but it can be helpful if you're using voice attack in a noisy environment. And then you've got the disable acoustic echo cancellation. This will disable the echo cancellation on the PC and attempt to increase recognition reliability. But this is a system-wide change and could affect other applications that depend on it. So if you're having problems, try disabling it and see if it helps. The rest of this, I've never ever needed to touch anything on this. I'm not gonna go through them. If you wanna know, bit more about them have a look in the manual it explains in there what they do and how to adjust them the next tab is going to be the audio tab quite a few options in here most of which you shouldn't need to touch as the defaults work just fine on a new installation it's automatically set to integrated components unless you have major problems i'll leave it on that don't touch it you have legacy audio and windows media components but i'll just leave it on the default Navigation sounds, you can have this on or off, depending on whether you want voice attack to beep at you and make noises when you do things. Fade stopped audio. If audio is playing and it gets stopped by either you killing the command or something interrupts it, this lets it fade out rather than cut off abruptly when it's just more of a preference thing. Over a default playback device, if you've got integrated components selected, you'll be able to select the output channel that your audio files play through, either your headphones or your desktop speakers rather than the default Windows option. The same applies for the default text-to-speech option. The feature on, off and stop just lets you change the default voice attack sound to those three functions. So you can have a bit of fun, have something you know, slightly different. And in the for fun section of the manual, it explains how you can use your own custom sounds. Audio cache size. When voice attack reads an audio file, it holds onto it in memory. So that repeated playing the same file doesn't have to be read from the disk over and over again and speeds things up a little. You can change the size here. If you set it to zero, it turns off the caching feature, which can be useful in some situations. Then down here, you've got media playback devices and communication devices. These are what you set in Windows. I wouldn't touch them because if you mess around with them here, it can affect other programs. If I say change this one here, I need to change now, as it says there on the warning, this feature will change the default audio device specified by Windows. Changing the device here will affect all applications dependent on these devices. So unless you really need to mess around over here, I wouldn't. You need to change it, change it in Windows directly. Don't change it in here. That's just my advice. And the last option we've got here is sound effects. This lets you add sound effects to your sounds. We've got one in here already, which is my new set. You can add new ones if you wanted to. You can edit ones. There you go. So this is edit effect. Give it a name, and then you can add the effects in. You can change the various settings there. So if we add in, say, an auto wah or chorus or echo, you have the various effect sliders you can use to change the sound. It's a preview, whether you want it on, like, say, you know, the voice. And then you can you know, mess around it and have lots of fun with it. That deletes it. And that just lets you change the order of the effects. And that's the audio tab. We'll have a look at the other menus while we're here. There's not a lot really to do with these. So on the general one, you can set up your registration, you can check for updates, reset to defaults, get your system info. And there's various other options on here that you can change if you want to. If you want to use any plugins, you need to enable it there. You've got your plugin manager. The load on profile and startup, 
don't ever touch it really. It's not worth playing with because it can cause problems if you've got other profiles you're using. I've got my two joysticks enabled, so I can use my joysticks in voice attack. And then you've got the sounds folder and the apps folder. This is where voice attack is going to look for any sound files you're going to use by default and any applications, any plugins you're going to use. Once you have changed it, you need to restart a voice attack for it to take effect. Then we've got hotkeys. I've got one there just to talk all this in on and off. Mouse click recognition, never had to touch that in any way, shape or form. Same event, all this, I've never touched this, never had to. If you want to change it, go ahead, but I would leave it in the defaults and just change it in voice like if you need to. The last one is system and advanced. Again, most of this you shouldn't need to touch in any way, shape or form. If you have a positive voice attack not passing key presses through the games properly, you might need to set it to run as administrator in there. But other than this, I wouldn't bother worrying about any of this. The only thing you might want to do is export your settings and import your settings. That's it. But most of this I'll just leave as the defaults if I was use. And that's the other menus. So we'll leave it there for now and I'll see you in the next episode. If you have any questions, comments, ideas, what anything, put them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, click the like button and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe too and share the video out. Until the next one, take care and I'll see you soon. Toodles.